welcome. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kyle. I'm part of the Bromley North Congregation, and we're going to be continuing today looking at Genesis. We're in verse uh, chapter 31, verse 22, and kind of to the end of the chapter. And we're in the, we're talking about Jacob. And if you've missed what's happened in the past, this is kind of where we're at in the story. So Jacob's been working for his guy called Laban for 20 years uh, to be able to marry his daughters, and but he's been treated atrociously and he gets this point now where God's finally freed him and given him permission to leave and has given him the assets that um, Laban had. Basically goes, God puts stripes in the sheep and spots on them and goes, they're yours now. So then Jacob starts fleeing and that's always a good thing. When God calls us to go, we go. There's no point dilly-dallying and Jacob does this, but what happens is in this process is Rachel steals uh, Laban's idols of other gods and takes them with her, these gold trinkets and then Laban finds out that they've escaped and chases them. It takes them seven days, but they eventually captures Jacob. And when we get to that point, Jacob, uh, Laban tells Jacob that, what are you doing, you fool? And now because of this, I have the power to cause you harm. But I, but God, but your God has spoken to me and says that I cannot say anything uh, too good or too bad, and I cannot cause you harm. Because, but why did you steal my idols? I don't get it. Jacob goes, I haven't. You can go search and put it in front of your people, my people, whatever it belongs to you. He's unaware of what Rachel has done. And Rachel then lies and basically uh, uses the fact that she's a female to um, hide these trinkets from um, Laban. And to which point Laban and Jacob re get back together. And Jacob then curses whoever has stolen these idols uh, that they will that they will die. And we he's not fully aware he doesn't realize the consequences of his words and the impact they will have as we see that rachel eventually passes away uh, the one he loves and that has a massive foreshadowing when it comes to some stories that we'll see later in genesis but despite this um then jacob basically rebukes laban and goes the lord has done this because of the way you've treated me over the last 20 years i've looked after your sheep and your your family um, Rachel in Hebrew also is another word for, uses a similar word for sheep as well. I've looked after them. I've at my own cost. I've treated them nothing but good, but you've treated me nothing but badly. And God's rebuked you. And still after this, and going look at what God has done. Laban still goes. I'm, that may be true, but your your wives and your daughters, your land, your your flocks are all still mine. They still belong to me. But I can't harm you. So, because I can't, let's make a deal. Pile of stones, I'm gonna go back home. You don't come back to mine. I'll leave you alone. Oh, we're done here. And they made a pile of stones and we move on. So what can we gain from this story for us in the 21st century today? I think it's really three things. One is, Jacob, like us, is, uh, is under the, was under the rule of someone else. He's under the rule of Laban. He was firmly got him in his grasp right where he wanted them. And the devil had us too. We were under the yoke of sin and death, right? For those of us who are in Christ now, we have been liberated and we have been freed from our captor. In the same way that Jacob has been freed by God to go. But here's the thing. The devil, and like Laban, will do everything that he can to try and bring you back under his grasp. He will try and compel you, but he cannot. He cannot compel you because you are free and he is still under the lordship of christ christ is a sovereign god is still in, in control and the devil can do what he's allowed to do so he can talk he can bark but he cannot compel you he'll try to he says that he believes that he can he goes hey you are you are still the same man as you were before your your value is still x you're still worth y you can't free yourself. You're not free. You, you'll slip back to your old habits. Don't you worry. Just come back with me. You're being a fool trying to run away. None of this is real. But here's the thing is that we have to remind ourselves that actually, no, God is in control. What he did on the cross is fully and completely uh, satisfactory. That when we are seen, we are hidden in Christ. Christ sees us as perfect and blameless. And we are no longer slaves to sin. And we are so quick to forget this and quick to be ensnared as Laban is trying to ensnare Jacob. That everything he has is still his. 
Point number two is this, is that when God has freed us of our chains, why do we still want to bring our idols with us? Rachel has been freed from the house, being under the house of Laban and the way she's been treated too. He talks about the idea of she's been treated like a foreigner, yet she still brings the trinkets. Things that have not changed her circumstances, they're worth utterly nothing in comparison to God that changes the stripes on sheep and puts spots upon them. For us today, the, the God who's died on a cross for us, yet we still go, you know what? I love you, God, but I still love this too. Um, you can have everything, but just not this. My challenge to say is, are we, are we adding stuff? Are we bringing our idols and our chains with us now that we're no longer slaves? Or are we casting off things that will slow and hinder us? What is the other things in our life that we take along with us? And here's the thing is that our, the secrecy of our sin and the secrecy of Rachel leads to a downfall. Jacob doesn't know. She's kept it secret and Jacob makes his curse upon her and leads to her death. And when we keep our sin secret and we hide it, it becomes a downfall for us too. It may not be the same literal consequence as Rachel's, but it does have a physical one and it is, nothing remains hidden and or goes unacknowledged. So are we still bringing our chains with us in our freedom? And, and lastly is this, is that we need to be careful with our words. Jacob misses the, the trick here. He's so quick to cause condemnation, it causes him suffering. Are we doing the same with our words? Are we speaking truth in life? Are we being quick to curse and bring judgment? Um, or are we looking, are we using our words uh, for, the, for the betterment? Or are we using it to cause damage? And that's my prayer and hope is that, you, that, that you'll consider today, um, if you are feeling condemned, that you'll be reminded that the, that the devil has no capacity or power over you anymore. In the same way that Laban has none over Jacob. That for those of us who have got idols that we're bringing along with us, that we will throw them off and let them no longer be a stumbling block. And that we will speak truth in life and we'll use our words for good and not for evil. Uh, God bless.